Okay, so this is all about Wolverine, a very violent individual. <laughs> and this is really an, uh, an idea about what does Wolverine contribute to the concept of American individualism. And to watch this is really to see Wolverine bear all, and I hope to dissect him a little bit. Uh, Wolverine is somebody who is tormented. He is somebody who is in America, popular in American culture. We've seen that in all the you know, multiple X-Men movies. It's very violent. But you know, to get, you know, get past the violence, we really need to understand where he's coming from. It's fear, and to empathize with that fear. And uh, you know, this is where we start to see the merge with you know, the, the mythology of Wolverine reflecting itself in American culture. So to get to what does that, you know, what does American culture have to do with that, we are dominated by individualism. In, indeed, this very thing, you know, driven in large part by social media, uh, has to do with the individual broadcasting themselves out to society. And it's highly American and, uh, you know, very much a Western cultural uh, concept. And indeed, it was an American president who wrote the book on American individualism, Herbert Hoover. <laughs> Perhaps not the most memorable or favorite of uh, presidents, but he wrote the book on it nonetheless. And it was another American president who wrote the book on rugged individualism at the turn of the century. And what we see unified between these two people as, as leaders of, American, of the American people, as American culture, is we see them talking about the core of the individual at the, cen at the center of character and, uh, and, the, and identity. And what we see with Wolverine is a little bit more unbridled. Here we go from, uh, you know, distinguished noble individuals to a naked beast man raging at a, at a you know, blind government panel who has stolen his identity, okay? And you know what? We like that in American culture, too. <laughs> Specifically in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, but it's still around to a degree. The guy down there is Danny Crockett, for those who weren't born back then, including myself. I'm sorry, Davy Crockett. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> and we still love individuals, perhaps a little less violent. Uh, the guy on the left uh, over here is uh, Bodie Miller, of course. And uh, then we have Jim from the office, and arguably the face of uh, one of the most powerful br uh, branches of government ever, Nancy Pelosi. Which is to say, so bring in the, uh, the other part of Wolverine, okay? And he's not all slice and dice, nor is American individualism. It's not, you know, as raw and as violent as uh, it would seem sometimes. It's really about a search for identity. And we love the search for identity in America. We are all about it. Spend billions and billions of dollars on this stuff. It is an economy unto itself. And what we can see now, though, is the difference between the individual and the group. The group really, you start to bring in the group, and the group helps with that quest. And, you know, it, it really goes to talk about that we are not alone, and this mythology of the individual cannot stand alone. Yet we see here reflected that Wolverine does much of this alone, even as his friends and his teammates look on. So, <laughs> mythology is reflected in culture, and culture reinforces mythology, all right? Here we have a bunch of maniacs with metal apparatchiks getting ready to kill, or at least go out for Halloween. And what we see here is that even the comic book writers of Wolverine acknowledge that the group is important. It's not fully you know, uh, unattainable you know, without having a group. That's why you have the X-Men. Wolverine is nothing without his X-Men. And that's where we start to see the foibles of people who are extreme individualists, such as Anne Rand. This very uh, choice quote we found here. Uh, I uh, got a big laugh out of that myself. And, uh, you know, it's a very extreme concept. And it really, you know, starts to contribute, though, to culture in its own way. As we search for our identity, we go through different phases of looking for who we are, what we're doing. And, uh, you know, some more extreme than others. I don't think you're going to find anarchy in a Green Day patch. But, uh, you know, we all, we all do it. And to go back to... The, you know, the culture, the, you know, the roots of culture, the structure of culture, you know, culture puts in place rules. And in America, those rules are basically the rules of the individual, the rights of the individual. It's written into the Constitution. These are distinctly, the entire legal system is an individual's legal system, which is ironic when you look at how we feel about government and about how we feel about our culture, because we're constantly raging against the faceless government that, is, that would either grant or take away that power from us, those rights. And that's where you start to see Wolverine start to rage. And thus you see the emulation of the mythical hero 
turn to reality, getting ready to slice up some people or perhaps a few lemons for those cocktails in the background. <laughs> so at the end of the day, what is this all about? It's really just about taking a look at mythology in our culture and uh, understanding. And Wolverine, he's not such a bad guy. Take a look at him. He's like an American cowboy. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>